welcome to Otherworldly, the Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, show. This is the uh, once a week we have a live show to give a taste of what the conference might be like and also to indulge my fascination with all of the wonderful things you can learn. Tonight, our guest is Corby Mitley. Mit I get it wrong. Lied. It lied. It lied. Uh, uh, who is a certified tarot master, past life specialist, psychic medium, uh, channel. Uh, I like the, the description, beacon of manifestation and vision for her clients, which I got off some of her literature, which is very cool. She's a full-time professional uh, intuitive counselor and inspirational speaker. She does speaking and she does reading. Um, and she has done this professionally since... The towers fell. It's actually that's like, since ninety four is when I went. Uh, oh, before that. Well, I guess you you went full time at that point then. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. and uh, she does uh, life readings at, at home. Um, obviously, you can't do that at a show because it takes you hours and hours to prepare for one of those. Um, she was uh, featured in the uh, book. Um, uh, your life's plan, your uh, life. Uh, let's see, I don't know. Soul's your, plan. your soul's plan. Soul's plan. Your soul's. Uh, what is it called? Your, your soul's love was the most recent one, and uh, Robert did three. Your soul's plan, your soul's gift, and your soul's love. But I'm having I'm having her tonight. She last time she was here, we talked about past lives, how they impact your current lives. But this time, uh, she's talking about. I've kind of mushed together inappropriately or maybe appropriately her two books. One is the psychic yellow brick road, how to find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. And you've got the magic who needs a genie, which is a listener's guide to holistic expos. And she's very practical, very straightforward. She just gives you, I don't know if there are any other books out there that can tell you, how to avoid these pitfalls. Uh, so I'm hoping we can cover a little bit of both because not everybody wants to be a professional counselor. Uh, but uh, but on the other hand, if you can get, if you can work with your psychic, like you work with your doctor or your lawyer or anybody else, then you can get a better result. And Corby can tell us all about that. So I'm going to, uh, <laughs> did I leave anything out? Well, um, basically, I started reading in 1973, which means, you know, Moses was in diapers. I was <laughs> senior in high school. We were all hippies. We had our elephant bell bottoms, our David Crosby fringe jacket, and our deck. And the first one I had was the James Bond 007 tarot deck from Spencer Gifts. Uh, basically, I take my work seriously, me not so much. Um, I am not one of those psychics who goes around saying, well, my aura don't stink. I have done stand-up comedy about you think a psychic's life is easy. I write for rookies. I write for people who want to know. Um, because I write nonfiction. I write from my own life. And I'm 68. I am not going to be around here forever. It is time for me to pass on every single thing I learned to the next gen. So... When I flip my sign, it goes from psychic medium to spirit guide. They've got the information down here and they can get started. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask you about that a little bit because yeah. I'm not clear in my head with uh, the difference between a um, uh, channel and a psychic medium. I, I always thought a psychic medium was somebody who channeled what spirits wanted to say. Providing them with a the mouth. What's the now, difference? Psychic medium is a title people know. Um, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics aren't mediums. Mm -hmm. For me, mediums talk to dead people. They get your dead Aunt Rose. Channels, they can do angels. They can do spirit guides. They can do messages like Abraham and Seth. I separate it out so that people know what to ask for. Does that help? Yes, actually. It, now I now I am clear on that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, past life specialist, 
why do you say that as opposed to um, why do you was specialist? As a the way I figure what we do when the universe hands us our draft notice and you take it and they say, great, you're working for me. It goes rifling inside your file cabinet. We're all old enough. We still know what file cabinets are to see what you got. So me, I was a theater major at Brown University. I was a professional actress in New York. So I understand characters and stories. Words are my drug of choice. I'm a writer, so I can tell the stories. And I have loved history since I was a wee thing in single digits. Therefore, what are my top skills? Tarot and oracle cards. And I can weave the story for you. And past lives, because I see it like a movie and I know the details. You can have somebody else who's also good at past lives, but doesn't have the background. And we each see the same thing. There's person will say, well, it's a, a long dress and a very fancy hat and you're in front of a really ornate building. So I think it's like Europe maybe in the 19th century. I could see the exact same thing and go, hobble skirt, pitch your hat. That kind of an ostrich feather, she's in front of the Brandenburg Gate. It's Berlin in 1911 or 12. On the other hand, do not give me a sharp pencil and ask me to do spirit art. I cannot draw a stick figure with a sharp pencil and a lot of prayer. It's not my wheelhouse. One of the problems with rookies is they think they need to get everything right. No, they don't. Pick what you love and get good at it. You know, there are general practitioner doctors, but if what you really love is pediatric pulmonology, like my brother, helping little kids over CF and asthma, go do that. It really is. What do you love? That's what you're going to put out in the world. Yeah. Um, well, see, I, I'm a generalist. That That's my thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Um, but I, I can easily see how not picking one thing has led to me not getting really good at any one thing either. But on the other hand, I can make connections between different tr things beautifully. So I, I, I'm satisfied with that. Uh, can I divert again a little bit? Yes. Is it okay if I mention? You know how long we've known each other. Our, well, you know, but ElfQuest. We were in our twenties. We Elf were. Quest. You you worked with the peonies. I I just reread. I just discovered there was a, the uh, Skywise's adventures, and I didn't know that they were out. And I read them. And then I went back and I reread all my ElfQuest. I did. Practically nothing else for the last three days. So, <laughs> except rereading re your books. Um, but which which parts did you contribute? I know you're an author named on that. All right. They hired me in 83 as their administrator director and associate editor. So about issue 16 of the first series. Mm -hmm. In fact, when Wendy was originally drawing the armor for the go-backs and the... Uh, wolf riders okay i noticed she was just putting armor on top of them and i said wendy because i learned it from the sca you okay. need some padding in there so she added the padding so that's the first time i was able to contribute to elfquest mm -hmm. um eventually i ended up writing for them uh the Kavi series a lot of embers books um and they're still great friends i mean they live a couple of hours from me. Wendy was my matron of honor. Richard took the photos at our wedding. Um, I am a writer, but mm -hmm. I do not tell the tales that Wendy can. Wendy's gift is fiction. Mm -hmm. Mine is nonfiction. I was I was thinking as I just reread it, mm -hmm. how incredibly they express. Here you have beings that that might seem immortal. Mm -hmm. And yet they can die. And Wolf I wonder came. what's after. And, oh, gee, this person who's died and they the spirits can communicate with us, but they're not talking to me. What did I do wrong? And they have the same issues that we have. And I I just love their expression of the, they've got the healing. They've got all of the things that we have in, in smaller amounts. Uh, but. Okay, so that's that's me fangirling on, on ElfQuest. Sorry about that for everybody who, okay. who hasn't discovered it. Go look for it. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful graphic series of graphic novels. 
that you can because you if you're coming to it this late you can binge which is well worth doing okay um so you let's get getting back to interactions between uh uh to between clients and and readers mm -hmm. what's the best way how do you empower as you said you don't you know nobody is accurate all the time and uh, yes, but your, yes, your my, point my is line is empower people even the best of us are only 85 percent accurate the only one 100 percent accurate is god and god is not doing phone readings this week <laughs> you see you gotta get him to laugh as yep. long as you don't come across as I am a great reader, my aura don't stink, you poor thing, I will read for you. That's like the gypsies that go, Oh, you have a family car, so many in your family, four, you have dog. No, we don't go there. Um never met one that did that, but oh, 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 that's why I wrote this book. I was doing a show about 18 years ago in Toronto, and it was 250 booths. And the fake gypsy was across from us. And there was a woman who was going down the aisle looking at all the booths. And this gypsy comes out from her booth and grabs the woman's arm. And in the parlance, that's called hooking. And it's as bad as the other kind of hooking. And she says, you no need to pay 30, 40, 50 dollars. I read your palm for 10. Come. Drags the woman into the booth behind the screen. 20 minutes later, we see this woman leaving, crying hysterically. A bunch of us run over to find out what happened. And the woman did say she had a family curse. And if she didn't burn 400 specially blessed candles at the Roman Catholic Church, I bless real good, only one dollar candle. Her entire family was going to die in two weeks and she bought it. That's why I wrote this book. Because people need to have awareness of what's real and what isn't. How to choose a good intuitive, what we can do, what we can't. Yes, Miss Jane. Hi, so good to see you. And you too, I, sometimes when I'm doing divination, I get a flash. And there was once I was reading runes and came out, and it's not Norse, it went chocolate. And the lady almost collapsed. She was the biggest chocoholic going. So do you ever get flashes like that that are not necessarily with the cards? Over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. One of the things that I tell people is I am not going to fudge what, what I get. Um, and they they have to deal with it. Um, part of it is when I do mediumship, I do not just go pulling things out of the air because it drives me crazy that that's so vague. The way I do my mediumship is I get their dog tags. Who this person was to you, their full name, the year they died and how old they were, for instance. My father, Jerome Richard Dorkin, who died in 2001 at the age of 80. Notice that tells me nothing, but gets me right into the energy. How do my guides help me with that? For some reason, they've decided we're going to play charades. So I get things like they smoked, they had surgery, there was an accident. Um, there was a woman who wanted to speak to her father-in-law. I feel myself miming a pool cue. He taught her how to play pool. Woman in Canada wanted to speak to her grandfather. All of a sudden, I do this. Now, we Americans salute like this, Brits and Canadians out like that. Two weeks before she had just graduated from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Academy and the grandfather was acknowledging that. You know, I don't know where that stuff comes from, but I stay on, the ego is on the shelf, out of the way reading the magazine and I let it come through. But it is also one of the reasons that I will not do mediumship other than one-on-one. -on -one. Can I tell the story, Chip? Yeah, of course. Okay. This was in Canastota, New York. There was a biracial same gender couple. The black partner had died and her white widow wanted to speak to her. See this face? Nice Jewish kid from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I have manners. What came out of my mouth in flawless urban ebonics was, well, shit, if it ain't my white bitch. And I'm going, Ooh. but the woman in front of me starts laughing and nodding because that is the sentence that her partner, Isabel, walked into the house with after every business trip. You cannot let your ego question what you're getting. You have to be the clear megaphone. Are you going to be wrong sometimes? Yeah. But you just may come up with something like the chocolate thing that is so on target and there's no explanation. That makes people believe. So 
rolling back the answer, Jane? Oh yeah. And and there you are. You it, it it's like I let people. You have to be able to be willing to make a fool of yourself. Is what I tell people who are mm -hmm. starting because and and you know people may not like what you tell them. And um, one of the things that Wendy taught me was the sentence, praise and blame all the same. You don't take to heart the people that think that you suck rocks and you're a cheat. And you don't <laughs> fall in love with the people who think you your aura don't stink. You're the best <laughs> psychic ever and you're never wrong. To both of you, you say, thank you for sharing. You may think that if you wish. Um, there was a woman, uh, I told her, I saw her taking in a border and she'd probably want to sell her house within the year. And she looks at me and she says, you suck. And she gets up and walks away. Okay. Next time I was back at that venue, she's the first person who sits down. She says, last time I said, you sucked. I said, yes, I remember. Because you told me I was going to take in a border and then I was going to sell my house. And I thought that was all bullshit. But my daughter got pregnant and moved home. And now I'm going to sell my house to help raise my grandson. And I still don't like you, but I want to know what else you see. <laughs> keep the message with you. Well, I have. you've got to be ready for that. You just do. Uh, keep talking for a second. Yes, ma'am. Miss Jane. Yeah. Um, once I was doing a uh, rune divination at an event and a woman came in sort of looking scared and it turned out and it was the like, sticks were very clear on it that her husband was abusive. And so it was how to get her to freedom. Mm -hmm. And so making sort of plans and where to contact and where, how to get her out. And you'll get some of those situations too, won't you? That is, you absolutely do. You know, going back to how do I empower people? 95% of your readings are always going to be, does Bruce love me? So um, I do a card, Maisie, Bruce, the relationship, what they need to know and best possible outcome. If she still goes, <laughs> Then I pull what I call the three threes. Three cards for status quo. Three cards for the come to Jesus meeting and there's counseling. And three cards for hostile bye bye. It's been nice, but I'm out of here. And then I zip it. I mean, frankly, leave could be the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice sign, but it's her free will. If she goes, well, I guess I'll keep trying. I've read, but she has to make the decision. The only time I change that is if she does indicate she's been gaslit or she has been abused and then the reader's turban comes off, the reverend collar goes on and I counsel her about being a battered woman and where to go and how to handle it. That's what you have to do. And I'm also thinking that that reminds me of the other side of it, which is the person who will not take no for an answer uh, it's like he's going to leave his wife for me right i think anybody who's read publicly has run into several of these may i that is the one page that when people who already are readers read this book they are laughing they say jesus i wish i had this book when i got started it's yeah. called it's a chapter when when getting a reading won't help yeah can you tell me where my ex-husband is sleeping with his mistress? No, I don't do remote spying. Well, is he with the same one or a different one? I don't do remote spying. I'm sorry. How many prostitutes has he cheated on me with? That is still remote spying. Oh, well, you're no good. Is he sick? Is he going to die soon? Can I still get his money? <laughs> and the other one. My supervisor at work is mean to me. Is she going to get any nicer? No. Is your supervisor going to make her stop harassing me? No. Is she going to fire me? No, she's not. But if she doesn't like people, she fires them. Are you sure she won't fire me? It doesn't appear so in anything I'm seeing. I have a meeting with her tomorrow. Is she going to fire me then or should I quit first? <laughs> you yeah. know, those are the people that you just have to live, you know, live and be well. And it's it's also the same thing with the question, how often should you go to a reader? Um, if you come to me today, we do a career reading and a month later you say, great, that was really great. Here's everything that's changed. Let's look again. Happy to do it. But if you come to me once a year 
and it's always the same questions and you clearly haven't done anything. After the third reading, I'm a good bartender and I cut you off. You're wasting your money and my time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I laugh uh, a little bit remotely because um, when I went to a sixth, the sixth psychic after my husband died, I was like, okay, how do I make money? Mm -hmm. And I went to a psychic and then I went to another psychic and then I went to another psychic. And then the sixth psychic, I suddenly realized that I was that client and I had been trying to twist the phrasing to get a different answer. But when the sixth psychic in a row said, you can succeed at anything, you simply have to pick one. I burst into loud laughter and he was like very, very confused. And I said, I'm sorry, I just realized what an idiot I am. <laughs> and um, I, I still have a very hard time choosing between things. Because, but um, but I just realized that I had done the same thing that we always tell people not to do. So even when you know the pitfalls, sometimes you just do, you screw up anyway. It's, it's like healers get sick. Yeah. Uh, people, people, uh, t uh, uh, clairvoyants get blindsided. It, it happens. Mm -hmm. We're humans. Um, so, um, let's see what are I'm looking at some of the things I wanted to ask you as I go off on tangents. Um, uh, okay. I had, if we can switch over from going, you know, how to, how to get a good reading and how to work with a psychic. Wait a minute. Before we do that, what advice would you give to anybody who was going to go to a psychic? Uh, Yes, in your That's book. Psychics buy buy Corby's books. I've just put them on the in the chat. Stop. <clears throat> um, what? Look, people understand mnemonics. Remember, PTA Parent Teacher Association. So I give them words. The mnemonic for how to prep for a great psychic session is the word answer. Accept responsibility for your part in the session. No pop quizzes. No comparisons. State your intentions clearly. Widen your horizons evaluate your information, and then respond to the universe. I am not the kind of psychic that if you say, I don't know, just, I didn't have any questions. I just wanted to read it. Tell me what you see. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, fluff begets fluff. When you come to me and say, just tell me what you see. I, I'm fast, baby, but I can get A to L in your life encyclopedia. And if what you wanted is down here at T, you'll go, oh, she's terrible. She didn't tell me anything. So have your list. I love questions. Um, and I will do a drill down, for instance. Well, when people come to me, um, especially at psychic fairs, I hand them a rat card. Tells a little about me, these are important. but. I will ask them, what is the most important thing you want to get out of your knowing? And if they go blank on me, I'll go Brooklyn on them and go, darling, what's biting your butt? Because everybody, you hear that, they'll come out with something. And if they say career, I'll go, terrific. Do you want to stay where you are, change jobs, or open your own place? That is not cold reading. That is, I have three multiple card drill down readings for these specific things. So let's say... Chip came to me and said, all right, I'm finally going to open up my own reading parlor and crystal shop. I would not flip three cards and say, wait until October and fire the second redhead. Gives them nothing. It would be a card for Chip, uh, a card for any partner she had, a card for the energy around the business, the brick and mortar location, how to market it, clients, competition, staff, finances, what they need to know and best possible outcome. Now, why do I know how to do that? Because before I was a psychic full-time, I was an executive recruiter for engineering and manufacturing, placing people in six-figure jobs. There is no shame in using your back history to make you a better reader. None. So instead of 
she said, I can't do this. People are empowered. They see all of the possibilities and they are fired up to go make it happen. Do not ask me a yes or no question. Um, like, is my business going to succeed? Because then what if I said no? When you say, how do I make this happen? How do I rock and roll on this? Then we give you all of the energy that you need. If it's not going to work, I will tell you. But my philosophy is, here are your opportunities and how to grab them. Here's the tough stuff. Here's how to get through it or around it. Here's your toolbox. Go rock and roll. I hand you the toolbox. I am not the repairman. It's important that they know that. Okay, we got a, um, we've got uh, an unmute ca cathedral. I see a little paw up there, cathedral. But you there got we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, um, I have a question, please. This is Deb Gedney. I'm Deb. So, yeah. I'm Amber. Yeah. Uh, hey nice to meet you. So okay. I had an experience once where I was reading and I had one of those flashes that you talk about. Yep. And I've often often wondered, uh, cause it only happened once and not before or since, mm -hmm. but I pulled up a card and I got this flash of silver and then pain. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I asked the, the uh, querent, you know, what was she doing that day? And she said, well, she was working in the kitchen at an event that we went to. And uh, I said to her, well, you might want to stay away from the knives. So she got very um, paranoid about it and, and wouldn't like cut anything. She was doing other things in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out she got burned on a pot. So, so 85% rule. It's what? It's the 85% rule. You yeah. Well, the, the, the question thing. is, I mean, is something like that just predestined and there's no bit of advice you could possibly give that could avoid something like that? No. No, um, you did the best you could. I might have said, I don't know what this is, but I'm seeing a flash of silver in pain. Not as in agony, but ow. So wherever you're working today, if there's anything silver or metallic, keep your wits about you a bit. That would not have said knife. That would have just kept her eyes open. See? That, that's simply how I would have done it. I am not, you know, nobody died and made me God. But that <laughs> might be a way for you to take something like that. Look, sometimes those things happen, all right? I use the Tarot Illuminati. This is their version of the Three of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. Standard Rider weight. it's the guy in the church and the stained glass window. But this is the card I read. Again, this is up in Canada. And I looked at it and I looked at the couple sitting with me and I said, I have no idea why I'm saying it, but I think there's a deconsecrated or abandoned church and you need to open up a cafe bakery there. And I'm thinking they're going to call a paddy wagon. And they look at each other and they look at me and go, oh yeah, we know each one. We've been arguing for two years. That's <laughs> why you just have to let it out. You cannot let your rational mind go, don't say that, because you'll lose the opportunity. A, to give them the information that they need, and B, to look fucking awesome. And there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and and why not? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so there you are. I, I am kind of wondering about the, um, I'm picturing you at these, uh, in this sea of, what do they pipe and drape? <laughs> they give you their ten by ten cubicles. Yeah. Uh, there you are reading. Uh, so um, in the in your in your book about uh, what do you, what do you need with a genie? You got a that one. I've only visited a couple of those those types of of expos. There's a, you've got your table up front and then you're behind the table. Is there a Can great you arrange, can you arrange, so. How do you get privacy? To, open up share screen if you can, so that I can share with you. And then I can show okay. you some uh, stuff. Come, we also have there, a okay. hand up. I think I did. 
Yes, you did. Great. All right. Hang on one second. I was just thinking privacy, and I was picturing how how do you get privacy in that situation? I want to work it with you. Hang on one second. Dreams time. Name. Okay, I don't know what I just did. Corby. Let me put my glasses on. I'll never know. Psychic fear booth. An unknown error occurred. Let's see. So oh. here is my usual booth in Kitchener. Okay. Oh, okay. Ah. Yeah. Mm, that nice. Somebody's booth next to it. Right. It's 10 by 10. But so look, look back here. I have my long table. Yeah. I sit there. My client sits there. I can pitch my voice so that it's just the two of us. And one of the things that I do is I get a reader's high. When I did four day shows in Kitchener, uh, they went three to nine, 10 to nine, 10 to nine, and 10 to six. They did, um, And I read open to close. I would read 70 people and do two lectures in four days. I was toast at the end of it, but yeah. I was not tired at the shows because I loved what I did. Someone sits down with me. I am completely focused on them. Okay. That's right. Them. But the minute that they get up, my brain does core dump and the next person comes and sits down and I read them. Yep. Um, been there. Yes. And when you, I mean, at, peak i was doing 45 shows a year my nickname was the travel channel it's like any muscle at the gym you can do this because you've trained yourself how well i think that having the gods put their fingers on you and saying you're going to do this uh, they may have been giving you some support <laughs> but schnitt, as my grandmother would say just a schnitt. Just a schnitt. but but i was just looking at that and and thinking Okay, there you are in this incredible crowd. Do you uh, put up any kind of energy shield around you, a cone of silence, like in Get Smart? <laughs> no. You know, this is you're going to laugh. This is a little bit of, of the, the ghost of Queen Tamara. When I walk, I walk into a room three feet before I walk into a room. And my aura just fills that booth. Nothing dares be there. They just don't. Um, and, you know, a lot of people say, how do you find a good psychic at a psychic fair? And I tell them you have to be good puppies. First thing you do is you go in and you do your walkies, which means you go around and you look at all the booths. You don't have to talk to anybody. Then you get paper trains and you pick up the rat cards and anything else you want. And you read through it and you're going to find three or four you like. And so then you go, hold on, I'm going to sneeze. Oops, what did I just do? No. Gesundheit. Thank you. Um, and I tell people, you know, I can tell you I'm wonderful, and that doesn't count. And we hire our front people to say they love us. My first front person was the wonderful Laura Spickerman, who was my husband's office manager at the museum he ran Monday through Friday. Do you think she's going to dismiss his museum director? Probably not. I tell people, read the testimonial books. These are comments from people who've had readings with us. Are we good? Are we kind? Are we funny? Do we have specialties? Children, dogs, dead people? Would they come back? And then you check in here. You are putting your hard-earned money on the table. If the psychic doesn't feel like they have a brain in their head, they really give a damn about what they're doing or they're going to give you good information, don't go there no matter how cool the wiki woo looks on the table. And if nobody there rings your chimes, leave without a reading. There'll be somebody else at another time. That is the best thing we can do to help our clients not get burned. Oh, good. Jane, I think your hand's up. Yes, my hands up. Uh, I, I like the way you said a core dump after reading. This is one of the things I tell them when I'm reading for somebody that after the reading, I do a core dump. So don't come asking afterwards for more information because it goes away. This is part of the ethics 
Over. Right. I, I, I get something like that. It's an amnesia. It's like, no, I can't tell you what I said because I don't remember. That's why I used to record first cassettes, then CDs. At this point, nobody has a CD player, but I have a sign that says, feel free to record it on your phone or tablet. When someone has a reading with me here, I record it, send them an MP3. So it's, and I keep a copy, it's safe. They can't say, she said, blah, because then I can pull up the actual recording and says, no, I said, has a, has a, has a, blah. See? Mm. It, you just, you got to protect yourself. You just do. Yeah. I have found a, it useful. Like I got myself a, a 15 minute timer, uh, hourglass. Mm -hmm. uh, and having that there makes it harder for me to, just try and keep giving them something because it's time for the next person. Uh, yes. Do yes. you have anything else like that? Well, um, I'm a double Virgo and I'm German. My trains run on time. Um, but Debbie, you know, I used to share a booth, a 10 by 20, with the monrealist Debbie Dyer, whom I adored. Um, she and I were two different kinds of readers. I kept calling her brash New Yorker. She was tall with hair like mine, but pure white. Um, always in makeup. She used the Osho Zen deck and pendulum. That was her stuff. I did my tarot and past lives and talked to dead people. Um, she was like the iron fist in the velvet glove. And it worked. It really, really, really did. Now, you're giving your question again. For some reason, it went out. I know. I need to know why I said something to, about Deb. What was your uh question? I was asking about how you keep things going uh, on time. How, how That's you right. Okay. Your so, own, own urge to keep going. When, when I had the CD player, I watched the time. Now I have an hour, uh, 15 minute or 30 minute hourglass like you. Debbie just went on and on and on. And people got tired of your 45 minutes late for my reading. So she lost business that way until we got her much more on target. And that was one of the things that I was able to tell people. Yes, it's 11 o'clock and you're on at 2.30. I will be ready for you at 2.30. And if you are five minutes late, it doesn't mean I'm gonna tack on the five minutes and penalize the next person. Mm -hmm. And if you just signed up and I didn't collect money because I don't have a front person, if you're not here in five minutes, it's my right to give that spot to somebody else. See. This is the difference between the, the readers that I call glurpy purple with angels who are just trying to be nice to everybody. Hi, my name is Little Dancing Raccoon, and here's my spirit guide, Arctic Bear. Please. No. Come across as a professional. And, you know, that is part of the difference. I don't tell people, yes, seven generations, blah, 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 blah. Um, some I If I'm there and somebody puts their hand on this, I don't say, can I say, let me tell you. And I tell them about me. And it's short. It's snappy. It's obviously who I am. And the ones that want to have readings with me at that point are laughing and signing up. Because I'm not like everybody else which is why I have no problem. If there is a rookie there, I will bring them over to my booth. I will give them samples of everything I do. I will answer every question they get because they're a different flavor reader. So many times people have said, aren't you afraid that they're going to take your clients? I go, no, because the people that would want them for a reading are not my people. It's one of the reasons why when Debbie was doing a lot of readings and I wasn't, it was just my people aren't there. Not, oh my God, what's wrong with me? You've got to be playing the long game or you will not let, you will just, you'll kill yourself with agita every time. And that underground desperation is going to show when you're talking to people who might have a reading and they're not going to trust that. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, there was another thing that I saw in your book. 
Mm. That you took breaks. You scheduled breaks. That sounded brilliant to me. I I yes. uh, I read once at a fair back mm-hmm. when I, I was nursing a baby. They would bring me the baby. I would nurse. I would keep reading. Uh, one person would sit down the second that the other person stood up. Uh, somebody brought me a drink. I drank it at six when they closed the fair. I didn't get it. <laughs> this nope. strikes me as I wasn't doing it right, and you are. So share that with us. Hold on one second. I want to see if I can pull it up for you. Okay. We're going back to the screen. Okay. Here's an example of my sign-in sheet. One line for focus sessions, two lines for comprehensive. Focus session sounds better than mini reading. Comprehensive is just a general reading. But notice I printed out and the breaks are there. It's filled in. Nobody can say, well, can't you change it? That happened to me once. I was literally wolfing down a sandwich and a guy leans over my booth, pokes my sandwich and says, hey, my wife needs a reading. You don't need to be eating right now. Can we have a reading, please? And my front person went right in front of me and got him out and uh, you know, he did not come to booth. But the thing is, a lot of people will treat us like we're a burger, a latte or a car wash unless we have our boundaries and say no. Somebody comes up to me and says, yeah, well, tell you what, why didn't you tell me something you couldn't know about me? And uh, if you're right, I'll have a reading. I look at them and I smile and I say, I'm sorry, I don't roll over and fetch either. And I turn my back and they do not come in the booth. And I don't (laughs) care how awful I sound. Boundaries, yay. Boundaries and New York toed, yes. Mm. Well, I was kind of wondering, uh, you don't still do that, that travel... I can't do that travel anymore because in uh, 2019, uh, herniated disc and pinched nerve. At this point, um, I can no longer lift my boxes in and out. And I can't do the 10 hour one way drive that it used to be from here to Kitchener. Oh, I thought that was uh, what you had front people for was lifting the boxes. Not my if my front person lives in Kitchener, Ontario, she's not going to come to Warnerville, New York and help me put the boxes in. Okay, good point. Um. I hadn't and, heard of front people, but then again, I have daughters, so <laughs> yes, I, it didn't come and up. The, the front people that I hired don't want to do what I do. Anytime I broke that rule, they would be listening in. They would give gratuitous information or they'd try to steal my clients. One time and done. So my best people were Laura Spickerman, my husband's office manager, uh, Stephanie Lalonde, who is a brilliant French teacher. And Denise Lingell, who teaches at RIT and is also uh, someone who speaks ASL. So for a while, I could read deaf people. Which oh, cool. to do. Uh, it was hard work for everybody, but we managed. Um, the whole point is I, I will still do some shows. I do them in Saratoga. I'll do them out in Syracuse. Uh, you know, it's two hours. And Carl can help me load in the car and load out. And I have you know people there to help. Um, but the travel I can't do anymore, which is why I wrote the book. Why should everything that I learned in 18 years go wasted? Here, do not reinvent the wheel. Yeah, Mob really, Feathers well, did it all for you. I, I really, you know, whoever is watching this on YouTube, whoever is listening to it here, this is a, a book with more practical use. You, utility like the idea of telling people to take breaks and having a front person how to train a front person that's just so nice um the another section in the book is setting your prices and holy i didn't realize you and i had a whole thing about that oh yeah that's it's why the course i'm going to be teaching at before I read the before I read the book, I didn't realize that fifty percent of your gross is going into overhead. It can, but the, what is the title we came up with? Been there, done that. The gods didn't smite me. Why you're allowed <laughs> to charge? Yeah. Um. All right. I'm actually going to share business information with you. Okay. My overall numbers for account for the accountant fiscal year 2022. My gross was $60,000, $60,865, but, but 
advertising, banking, books and magazines, charities and donations, computer supplies and software, door prices, education, equipment, fax and copying, internet website, design and maintenance, legal services, meals and entertainment, membership and dues, office supplies, phone communications, postage, social supplies, trade shows and appearances, hotel travel, uh, travel mileage. Total business expenses thirty five thousand one hundred sixty two, meaning I made between twenty five and twenty six thousand for Uncle Sam. Now, admittedly, a lot of that things like, yeah, I my business expense is I pay our Spectrum bill. It gives me my computer to do my Zoom calls and my classes. It also gives us a phone and it gives us television, uh, books and stuff. I get the New York Times, the Washington Post, our local paper so that I can keep up with what's going on in the world because I write blogs. Um, advertising, that's all of the podcast groups that I belong with, that is Best Psychics Directory, that is um, uh, one-offs for shows. Um, what else is here? Internet. Internet is about $5,800 because I have a major website um, I work with Dreams Time to get stock photos when I need them, uh, Canva, GoDaddy. So I treat this like a business, and I have since I started. That's why I pay my taxes, which shows up a little bit extra every year in my Social Security, because then we oh, you worked, okay. Um, I feel like I'm real. A lot of people give us the bit about you're not very spiritual because you're charging. Well, it's true. Druids didn't charge because in those days, people would bring them a chicken or a cloak or a little firewood. These days, this is what it is. Do I do pro bono sometimes? Yes. In fact, I do a free reading hour once a month on Facebook and YouTube. And I read about 30 to 40 people in an hour because I am doing it like this. So you want a quick reading there. If you go to my website, you will see that I have two dozen kinds of readings. Your burning question for $24.95 takes me four <laughs> minutes to do and I send you a recording. All the way down to my soul plan readings, which are like the work I did for Robert Schwartz. You come to me with why did my child die at 35 or... Why did I come in with an abusive father? Then it involves numerology. It involves deep trans meditation. I pull down two to once as many as 10 different past lives in detail. And then I'm on the phone with you for an hour that night. That reading is 600 bucks because you've had me for the whole day. But I downsell myself. I discourage people from the soul plane reading unless there's no other way they'll get the information. You think you want a half an hour, uh, an hour with me? I'll say, first time you've had a reading with me? No, no, no. Get a half an hour. You don't know how fast I read. <laughs> and people are amazed that I downsell. But it is one way of proving to them, yes, I'm making a living at this, but I'm not going to fleece you. And I work six days a week. Um, I don't work Wednesdays. This is a favorite to Chip because I've known her forever. Um, mm -hmm. Tuesdays I reserve for soul plane readings, but I only do that every other Tuesday. So the Tuesday I'm not doing that reading is when I do my spiritual reading and my own stuff. And I work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Am I working constantly the whole day? Oh, I wish I was. No, um, I'll have one reading to sometimes as many as five. In the end... I, I do about 800 to 1,000 readings a year. But when you realize the year is 365 days, it's not that many. It's mm -hmm. just that I yes. have arranged this <laughs> to be a business. That's why I, look, when you read online, you can read somebody in Rio de Janeiro, even if they don't want to come to Copelskill, New York with the sheep and the cows. Mm -hmm. I admit the fact that I'm in Robert Schwartz's books made this so much easier for me because those books sell everywhere. Okay. Now, Rob now has his wife, Liesl, and Liesl does all the channeling. So 
all of the psychics that he used are now kicked to the curb. You know, we were spear carriers. We our work didn't really matter. It was all about Rob. <laughs> um, not I, kick to the it curb. Maybe start maybe it's more convenient. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm not going to tell tales out of school. But okay. um, I'm not going to ask. But good. No. But you also need to know that all of the work we psychics did for his, him and his book, we didn't get paid a penny for all the work we did. Now, that's either bad or good. People will say he used you, maybe. But because we didn't get paid, nobody could say he paid you to say that. So it's a double-edged sword. And now people do read the books and come to the two people who are doing still doing readings are myself and my buddy Stacy Wells. And it's it's decent work, but it's only part of what we do. It's only part. But that's why I've managed to get the international rep. I have taken every single advantage I could and done honorable work. Was your hand up again, Jane? No. Yeah. Um, okay, in let, me the older Lois, days. let me get to Lois first, because we've been you and I've been talking a lot. Lois, what what's going on? Uh quick question. Your bio says certified tarot master. Certified by who? The Tarot Guild. Okay. Thank you. And I, was, and I was a certified professional tarot reader through the Tarot Certification Board of America, which is no longer around, but I'm still certified. Do you think that um, getting a certification like that is beneficial? Yes. I love the Tarot Guild because it's not only you get a certification, but it's very supportive. There are classes there. There are, you know, it's the only place I know where tarot reading is treated like it should be a true career. Really, it's wonderful. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Miss Jane, now you. Yeah, okay. In the older days, we, uh, soothsayers, we were the counselors, the, the equivalent of shrinks. And uh, many people would come to us um for um advice and it's it's interesting that now there are professional psychologists and psychiatrists but back in the old days it was us over mm -hmm. yeah uh, this is we, part of why you're, you're re you you mentioned that's why you it's useful to be a reverend to yes um people say how come you're a reverend well number one before gay marriage was legal in the U.S., if I had friends batting for the same team and they wanted sacred ceremony, by God, I was going to do it for them. And secondly, south of the Mason-Dixon line, more than once I've been told, you're an evil fortune teller. You're doing the devil's work. We don't want you here. And I'd say, oh, no, I'm a reverend. See, I'm doing spiritual counseling. Oh, reverend, we're so sorry. You go right ahead. Thank <laughs> you. I'm south of the Mason-Dixon line. I'm in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, I lived in Atlanta for seven, eight years. I can still give directions by the big chicken, but I'm sorry. I'm a New Yorker. I'm are there, not is, Magnolia, are there, I'm a bagel. Are there as many ghosts there as they say? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. But um, okay. I, I'd want to get to, we're getting close to the end. Um, look, I don't know about y'all. If you want me to stay a little longer, I can do that. It's up to you, Chip. Uh, well, I'm going to. Uh, I will I will hit unrecord I will stop recording when when gets to that point okay uh I always one of the things I noticed is that you don't want to read for the minors mm -hmm. and considering how one little thing can stick in your craw for 50 years uh yes. And you, I think you may be more open to it when you're younger. Is that is that the main reason? No. Or is it legal? When you are younger, you don't understand archetypes. You don't understand figuratively speaking. You think it's literal. And I don't want to see a 14-year-old spending 50 bucks for 15 minutes with me to find out are they going to pass geography and will Billy ask him to the prom? Now, if the mother is there with them and it's clear they're an indigo or a crystal or they need, then psh, absolutely, I would be happy to work with them. But okay. only then. I and was, the other thing. Part, um, part of where Changing Times came from is I always wanted to open 
uh, version of Xavier's School for Talented Teenagers. Yeah. And I just think that when you are manifesting psychic abilities and you've got nobody who can help you learn how to use them, it's 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 frustrating and and can lead to some really some of the shall we say funnier but sad stories about yeah. the stupid things we did in our youth yeah, and I, i'd yeah. like i'd like to provide more training for young people but it it's... i agree but the world is not what it was when we were young okay the united yeah. states is dangerous now and we have no idea who would have us arrested, who would dox us, whatever. So no, at this point, it's safer not to read them. But I, you know, what do you do when somebody- Unless their parents are there. Yeah. What do you do if somebody is there with their toddler? Mm -hmm. There is a thing to do. All right, so I'm trying to read this woman and her toddler, Malcolm goes, she looks at me and says, Corby, could you pull a card, please? You don't want to chance a deck because what if the kid goes, oh, look, Muffin. Yeah. No. Have a children's deck that you can pull out. This is called cat wisdom. And it's things like, ooh, family is good, Muffin. Or Muffin, are you ready for your party tomorrow? It, you know, and then Muffy gets her card. Mom is fine. And you can go back to the reading. You do not want to be responsible for the kid's nightmares. So, see, this is the kind of thing that is not taught except if you're trying to do a business. And it's the same thing in the book. I have bits called Corby Gets Candid, which are the little brown things. Yeah. And um, I think the first story in there is um, when I was in London, uh, London, Ontario, I did a reading for a 20-some-year-old young man who really didn't like what I told him. And the next day, I had an anonymous death threat on my table. But everybody at my booth signs in with their handwriting unless they are so disabled they can't. So we took the note, we took the sign-in sheet, we matched up the writing, and we handed it off to the police. This is not love, light, and unicorn farts anymore. <laughs> You've got to protect yourself. That's one of the ways you do it. Now, Chip, you were saying. Oh, I, I was, um, well, the, the, the thing that I would, the next thing I was trying to go for was, um, I just want to tell everybody, I put a link to the YouTube channel you have um, on YouTube, which I kind of binged on. Um, and you you've got a uh, guided meditation corby's wayback machine which is your past life perspectives several tarot card spreads that you have created uh is there a um tarot card spread you'd like to share with us or sure um, i see you put them on your facebook page i think part of uh, it um the two that i use most often uh is that two step on relationships which is person person relationship, what you need to know, and best possible outcome. And if they still don't know what to do, you use the three threes. Status quo, come to Jesus meeting, send them a postcard, I'm gone. When you do the entrepreneur stuff, um, that's, again, them, the energy around the business, the brick and mortar location they're looking for, how to market it, clients, competition, staff, finances, what they need to know, best possible outcome. What if someone says, well, I want to leave, but I don't know what I want to do. I think it's something like, you know, probably something to do with healing. I'd go, great. And then I would, again, pull cards to see where the energy is. Reiki, shiatsu, craniosacral therapy, polarity therapy, aromatherapy, reflexology, something we haven't discussed. They make the choice. And it is not always, this is the only thing to do. So the more information you can give them so they make the choice, the wiser you are going to look. Yay. Yeah, uh, that's the empowerment question I, I started out with. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to ask, 
if you have any more books in the works. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. But no, right nothing, now, nothing that you're working on right now. Well, I'm finding that these days, what I'm having the most fun with is podcasts and blogs. So um, I'm doing uh, short pieces on uh, my own website, Corby Gets Candid. And then I am starting my own podcast. Uh, but it's going to be like a pod bite. It's not going to be um, working with clients because frankly, I am a great interviewer. But what that means is everybody else shines and I'm chopped liver in the back. And um, I just don't feel like doing that anymore. So I'm pulling it up now. This is, hold it. This is what the cover is going to look like. We are hopefully going to get it out in late October. Good picture. Dino Petricelli, best freaking uh, headshot photographer I've ever had. Notice Tara, spirit guide, channeling, medium, psychics, comedy, awakening, and life. It is not just going to be, this is the latest wiki woo. It's because I do more than that. I do. So stop here. Did anybody have a question on anything I didn't cover? I, I do. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you tell, identify the indigo star C special children versus the delusional parent and that spoiled child? Because yeah. I find that that be 95% of the case. Um, my bullshit tolerance meter is set at featherweight. I can tell. Well, how do you identify your your indigo children? If there's joy, if there's eagerness, if it's not about their ego, it's the same way I figure out human versus other, and that I learned from Elquist. Um, people who don't want to be here, who are confused by being here who long for somewhere else and they don't know what it is and they just have that aura, I will look at them and say, okay, I'm going to give you two words. I want you to close your eyes and just immediately respond to the word that is you. Human. Other. And if I say other and they're the other, their eyes fly open and there's the, oh my God, you know who I am. The indigos and the crystals are kind of like that. When you tap in with a certain phrase or a certain question. People who are wannabes won't hear it, won't be able to answer it, or will turn it back to their own ego. Crystals, indigos, rainbows, you can see everything pouring out of them. Questions, delight. That's how you tell. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. What happens... If there is somebody and you're doing a reading and you say, holy shit, how do you give them guided advice for bad news? <laughs> I don't consider anything bad news. Look, I've done the cancer dance three times. Notice I don't say I fought cancer because what you fight fights back. And I am not a survivor because that whole word means hanging on by teeth and toenails. I am a cancer dancer. I found out how graceful I could be under pressure. I avoided getting my toes stepped on and I got off the dance floor in one piece. The closest thing to what you're talking about, many, many years ago, I was reading this guy and I know enough not, I health is not my wheelhouse. But I said, you know, I'm feeling a little something gray here. I would get an x-ray. I'm sure it's nothing, but you know, you should know. Didn't see them for a while. Five years later, his widow comes back. He was starting ALS. And because I got them to go to the doctor, it was found. And they had four really good years before he passed. I was just the person who was delivering it. You know, I never predict death. It's none of my business in any way. We have four or five possible places we can leave. Um, but you could say, warning, warning. What? Or be alert. Or check this out. I don't even make it that way. I, I say it as gently as I did. Because I am a hypochondriac. 
Sam says, warning, warning to me, I'm not going to sleep. And I will, mm. my blood pressure will go through the roof. You don't need to scare them. You give them a piece okay. of advice. And then you take your hands off. And if they choose to ignore it, you've done your job. You didn't fail. It was, you handed them a knife. And they could either use it to cut a bologna sandwich or stab their neighbor. But you only handed them the knife. They made the decision. I, I I was thinking about that with this is why doctors don't don't give you a prognosis either, because they may not may, they may think energy healing is wiki woo, but they know that the placebo effect uh, is amazingly powerful and that they really can't predict because they don't know somebody's, you know, every so often the doctor says, I, Pat, I don't know why you're alive. It's been three years and. And nobody, nobody lives with, with liver cancer for three years. So I don't know why you're alive. And they don't. So that's why they don't want to ever, it's really hard to get them to nail it down. And I respect that. I used to, it used to drive me up the wall. Mm -hmm. But back when my husband was doing the cancer dance, it just wouldn't tell us anything. Just keep it right on the now. But And now it's the lawyers. It's what? It's the lawyers. That's uh, why they can't say anything. But, but you know, the placebo effect and the nocebo effect are really very powerful. And one, and I'm glad that they respect that mm -hmm. for, for what it's worth. But uh, anyway, I see we have gone past the end. Uh, uh, do you have anything else that you wanted? Do you have any uh, events you're doing? Any other projects you're up to? Uh, well, you know, the podcast is the big thing. Um, I'm, I'm doing about that. A, a show in Gilderland. I'm doing a show in Saratoga. I'm doing a show in, in uh, Syracuse in February. Um, I probably do between two and four podcasts a week. And you, you either find them on my website on the Where's Corby page or they're on YouTube on you know, Corby interviews. Um, there are like 150 different articles on my website. Go read, enjoy the only thing I will ask is if anybody here does choose to buy the books, please, for God's sake, leave a review on Amazon until you have 50 reviews. They put you on the back shelf behind the pickles and nobody will ever see you. Oh, you haven't got that yet? Okay. Uh, that, no, I'll there. no. And the books, have, uh, I've got 37 for the book that came out in 2017. I got something like um, 29 for Psychic Ellerbrick Road, things like that. Oh, thanks for the reminder. I will. I shall go do that. Probably not. But don't pick. say you know me because then they won't publish it. Good point. Excellent you know, point. Thing, oh, you 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 know you bought her dinner or something. She's saying something nice. So, uh, so any any uh, do you have any good ways? This one of the things about changing times, changing worlds that Jane and I, why we started. We're trying to get the new age people to talk to the pagans, to talk to the spiritualists, to talk to the dowsers. You got any brilliant ideas on how we can help get people together like that? Well, I, my, my first idea is uh, it, stop being it, It's all about your or don't stink. What did I say first? I take my work seriously, me not so much. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Ego, and I am wiki wooier than thou, is the thing that will destroy the community faster than anything else. We are all in this together. Maybe I was a druid in my last life, and next time you're going to be an accountant in Des Moines. <laughs> These are parts we play, guys. We might as well play together and play nice. Because we are only one act. You know, when people... I want to leave with this, because sometimes people don't understand... But I thought the soul reincarnates. I thought I reincarnate. I know I'm not going to because I'm so tired. And I use the example Matt Smith. I say, okay, Matt Smith. We all know Matt Smith. He was the 11th doctor on Doctor Who. He was my doctor. But when he hung up the bow tie and the two short pants, he went and put on the naval uniform for two years playing Prince Philip in The Crown. And when he was done playing Prince Philip, he hung up that. Now he's some whack job in House of the Dragon. The doctor, the prince, and the whack job are all like incarnations. They're one and done. Matt Smith is like the soul, the higher self, that makes them all happen. 
he animated them, but they are not him. They're parts he played. And when you can give concrete examples like that, people get it and the information gets in, even if they don't understand metaphysics per se. Allegory is your friend. Tell them stories. Well, I'm just going to say that's a great place to end up, uh, reminding people that the Changing Times, Changing Worlds Conference is the third to the fifth uh, in uh, 2023. And uh, I hope you'll come. Corby, I believe you're only going to be there Friday. That's right. That's yeah. right. Because it's a drive so, for me. So I can come so down. If you, if and you yes, have... I will have the books. I will have the books with me. Yay. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, stop the recording now. And Corby.